நம்ம பார்க்க போகிறது சிவநாடா யூனிவர்சிட்டி சிவநாடா பல்கலைக்கழகம் இப்போ வந்து ஹெச்ஆர் மீட்டு நீங்கள் ஹெச்ஆர் மீட்டு ஹார்ட்லி ஃபியூச்சர் ஆஃப் ஒர்க் எஸ்எஸ்என் காலேஜ்
comes to uh, the future of work. And the fourth thing is, leadership is not going to be easy in future, right? Because So, uh, so when I say this an agile mindset, we'll have more and more people who will look for social impact in the future of work. There will be uh, more uh, dual couples or even people who will not want to settle down in that sense in life. So how will organizations cater its policies, etc., to create a safe working place for such people and for them to be flexible to uh, do things? Um, the fourth thing which I was just mentioning is that uh, Leadership is going to undergo a big change when it comes to future. You know, you cannot have a command and control style. You cannot have a merely democratic style. You will have a very participative style of leadership. Okay, so it's a channel global business services. Um, like Jyoti said, have been in the industry um, for more than 20 years now. Um, and have also been switching um, units. Uh, an accountant by profession, but then um, got opportunities to kind of move from finance to operations and then very recently into HR. So I don't hold uh, HR degree. Um, it's only the passion for people that kind of brought me um, to HR and um, the last three, four years has kind of cemented uh, that thought process pretty well that HR is definitely going to be the next phase of my career um, in whatever uh, scheme of things I, I do. So that's that's kind of a very brief about myself and um, there's so much conversations about future of work in, in almost every mind, every student's mind today, that's the question. What is it in store for me? What am I actually going to see? Uh, what am I going to face? How are organizations going to embrace me and so on and so forth? The only thing which I would like to re-emphasize and what I've been telling in every gathering I've been into is <coughs> the future of work which we have, we are rather preparing for, will be the most exciting one would have ever seen. Meaning none of us sitting here have seen that. We can only tell that it could be as interesting as this, but you are the guys who are going to actually experience that future of work is going to be. <coughs> And in order to do that, like Uma said, I invited me to come here on a Sunday morning. I have two reasons for it. Reason number one, the concept of SAPERS. Most of you, I think all of you were management students. So I would like to touch upon SAPERS first. SAPERS are the rare breed. If yesterday the work or business is done by managers, today it is done by leaders and the future, the work and business should be done by SAPERS. If in one word you ask me to define SAPERS, SAPERS are transformational. And today what Job Assis is doing is transformational. I think Asis, you deserve a big round of applause. <laughs> Bringing, you know. There will be only few standard questions. Tell me about yourself and the judges on that. And we really don't know what is, what did the judges in that one minute? And we are all confused. We come ask a director, ask our professors. And uh, so in that place, uh, it's a very huge opportunity representing them in behalf of them here. I have uh, two, three queries or questions which I would like to put it in front of for future of HR. So, I mean, future of work. So, for future of work, the first point I first thought I had is uh, in the traditional workspace, we had timing for working. Like, they have, they have to come at 8 and leave the organization. If we are doing or not even doing our work, we have to be there till 5.30. So, with the uh, with new inventions or new entries like Spiggy where you can work when you want, you can switch off the app when you don't want, there is a difference in the change I and mean, there is a change in the working pattern of the people. So, will this be the trend of future or there will be a fixed pattern of work 
or we can work at our convenience or how should we equip ourselves to that is one question that was running in my mind. And the second one is, uh, will HR be, uh, my question is not will HR be replaced by artificial intelligence or automation. It will definitely uh, to a point be replaced. But will HR specialization be replaced by other department people? For example, ma'am is from accounting and she has joined HR. So we are students of HR specialization. Will we be replaced by people who have experience in other different specializations and <laughs> go do that work? Why should I hire an HR person for it? I can do it. It's a genuine question I had so many. Uh, and one more question was, uh, we are doing our HR specialization. Everything is here is theoretical. We do one period of internship and another period for project in the organization. That is what is our real experience. How should our syllabus be equipped to meet your expectations. We really don't know how to meet. We are all freshers. After doing MBA, we join organizations. One point of time, we might be there in the organization for a continuous period. Otherwise, we quit the organization with pressures and we don't know how to go ahead. How should we equip ourselves? Should there be any educational change that should be done in our pattern or the structure? How people from the other side, HR, expect out of us? These are few. <laughs> but the with all of these influxes, I think where it is getting to is for everybody to have that flexibility and that choice. So many choices. One is what kind of work timings would you want? Would you want to come at six in the morning and leave in the afternoon, or come in the afternoon and leave at night, or you work graveyard shift through the night because you really want to balance multiple things. When we started working, we were only working. Today, none of you will only work. You will probably join an organization, but you will want to enhance your skill sets and so many other things. So you will look for options to kind of manage all of that. Second is, today, um, if you look at an organization, you, your fixed employee population will be much more than the contractors. The way things are going, it will completely flip. To say your fixed employees will be the limited percentages, and you will have contractors with different contractual terms who will manage the rest of your work simply because people don't want to be tied to an organization. So that's another flexibility. The third and most interesting flexibility, which recently we have introduced in, in the bank, is your dress code flexibility. When we started working, we only could wear a certain set of clothes to work. Right? You can't you can't wear a jeans and come to work. But when we went to organize institutions and when we were hiring, that was one question one of one of your friends in another uh, college asked me on my face. He asked me, you're actually hiring me to do coding, right? Why do you expect me to come in a full sleeved shirt, button tucked here, and a shoes and a tie? And I just can't think if I wear clothes like that. Very fair question, right? The guy is going to do coding. Why the hell should he be in a crisp white shirt tucked in and a you know crispy pants and a shoes? Very fair question. So we relaxed dress code to say that if you don't have a customer facing job, you're sitting in the back office and doing a job, you wear something which is comfortable to you. You have to be presentable. You can't wear, you know, your bathroom chapels and come to work, but then something which is presentable, which includes your jeans and your Trousers can be worn. That's a big push here. So I'll just take that point on other professions coming into HR. So I think HR should say bring them on. Can, let anybody come in, no problem at all. This can happen, you can also get into any other function if you wish to, right? Why does HR hesitate to get into any other function? What could be the reasons? Maybe some of you can answer. Why don't you get into engineering, finance? or um, procurement, supply chain, why don't you do that? Huh? Domain knowledge, yeah? 
competency mismatch. So how come everybody has a competency to come into HR? <laughs> so who is responsible for that? Yeah, it's HR that's responsible for it. Okay. I think what is going to be the future for HR, as I said in the just a few minutes back, is specialize in certain areas which bring insights, which cannot be that easy for anyone to comment on or get in and start. They must also qualify themselves to get into it. Just having an idea of finance, or just having an idea of engineering is not good enough to get into HR. Yeah? Otherwise, you wouldn't need an HR department there. The fact that we need an HR department is not for the recruitment related work or for doing the clerical jobs. The jobs that you need to for concentrate in future, for example, is learn instructional design. More and more learning that's going into the digital platform will require content. Yeah? So look at instructional design as an option and become a specialist in that. Compensation and benefit. Become a specialist in tailoring compensation programs. A finance person cannot do it as much as a specialized HR person can do, or for that matter, engineering. Which means they will have to learn, and there's no problem, people have to learn competencies, right? So that, that's also something that can be specialized. In recruitment, when you do it, you know, finishing the last mile is a specialized job of HR, right? We have to learn that. Now, many times recruitment decisions have been taken for the need of the hour. Just to push somebody in because you need to fill up a vacancy. Vikram will vouch for that, I'm sure. You're like dying for somebody that you want to get in. You don't worry really whether this person is fit in this place, culturally fit, the person who last for this place, what has been the past history, all those things have of what the impact that it's going to have, right, on on overall organization structure, economy, the way we look at things, you know. Uh, various functions of HR, right? L and D is one function, right? What, how do you really uh, cross your line and define? Good at multitasking. If you ask me, I did my under specialization, I mean, under graduation in literature, and I was also working as a part time video jockey in few channels like Do the Share and all of that. I was able to like uh, like divide my time and also be efficient at what I do across various streams that I've been doing. But also, I think uh, like. Uh, at one point, there was a lack in interest, like our generation are also like wanting to shift across various streams, like they want to uh, explore various things and they are also good at multi multitasking, this is like one of the plus and minus of our generation, I would tell. And I have a uh, few questions. So thank you so much. I'm sure each one of you would have put your heart and soul to put this entire program. And uh, I take this opportunity to thank the entire panel members. The first panel session 